Uh, so we talked about the, uh, we're in uh, Shari Oriah, one of the greatest fighting that were ever written in the history of the world. And I uh, want to mention to you guys one more thing, that I'm right now, I'm personally, which I've been learning Shari Oriah for 10 years, I'm in Shari Oriah, Sfirat HaTiferet, which is the fifth chapter, and you know, you know when you know a Sefer is strong? When you when you learn a part and then you just have to take a break afterwards and think about it, like you just walk back and forth and you're like, whoa, like uh, in the thoughts just get to you, you know what I'm saying? So this, the Shari Ara is one of the greatest sefarim that were ever written. And Baruch Hashem, we're all zochei over here to keep on learning. Gabriel is back with us. Thank you. Rabbi. What did the Malachim say? What did they say? The Malachim? How was Gan Eden? It was, it, was it was good. It was good. What was it? Huh? He was in Gan Eden for a couple of minutes. For a couple of minutes. That's one the Shama took a recharge uh, and now he's back. That's one eight. By, one by eight. the way, guys, guys, a lot of Zuhuyot, by the way. Uh, Hashem should give Hashem should uh, give him uh, half of the half of the half of one of those foods in this world. Amen. Amen. Half of the half of the half of one of them. Amen. Uh, people, because of him, listen, I don't care. You put me on, you don't put me on. You know, my dream was, my dream was that, you see the blue books over there, Vatshrot Chaim, that uh, two years ago we started learning the Sfarim, two years ago we got the Shara Shrat Kelim. then I stopped, I said, we're not ready, not ready. yeah, we're not ready yet, soon, soon. And, uh, but you know, every time we were learning the Shrat HaKelim, uh, we had 10 guys, and every single Shia, we always had a Kaddish afterwards, and I felt like we weren't ready for it, and uh, my dream was that we should get into that level, that we have 10 guys, that we could learn Otsrot Chaim at least, at least Otsrot Chaim. We have to make a pact. Like from the beginning, the pact, but then after we finish the Otsrot Chaim, uh, that's when we make the pact. And uh, then we can make the pact and we should be the, you know, the Kahal Kadosh. The Rosh Hashanah Kadosh, he died a very tragic death. He died the same way that Ari died, he passed away. The same way, the Magifa. The same way. And uh, many Tzadikim died the Magifa. It was a known thing back then. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's like a COVID. It's a COVID. Yeah. It's, 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 it's something that was very common. Top. So we're learning Sfrat Malchut. So we should be zocher to go back to Otsrot Chaim one day. Lefi she bikesh David likvo amakom and machadesh kena. We're talking about David Amelech, which is Mikhail Malchut, which is the tenth sphere, which is the revelation of the Shabbat. He wanted all of his life, he was always looking to make a place of a resting for the Shekhinah. That means, not that there's a resting for the Shekhinah, a place where you could finally reveal the Shekhinah easily. Exactly. That was his, that was his point. The <laughs> Hashem, rise up to your menucha, to your place of resting. Ata you ve'aron uzecha. And your and your Aron HaKodesh. Why? We need Aron HaKodesh. Which holds the Luchot and uh, and the uh, and the uh, Torah What did he mean? Says Rav Yosef. Yeshru machshevotav lifnei Ashkena. David Amelech Alav Shalom, one of the greatest personas in the whole Torah. His machshavot were straight. Veshalach veAmar lo Hashem idbarach. So Hashem saw that he was straight. That he was correct. He was not. There was no some kind of feeling in him. I'm building every time in Asher, I should get more, more uh, votes. I should build in Asher, I should get more people who like me. I want to get the Haredim on my side. No, Hashem saw, Hashem was Shem, Shem. testifying, he was L'Shem Shalayim, but Mamash Yashru Machshevota, so he said, Al Yideh Natan HaNavi, by Natan HaNavi. Lech ve'amart el avdi el David, ko amar Hashem, ata tibne li bayt b'shifti, you're gonna build me a house? I never, I was never in a state of revealment to any person since the time I came out of Mitzrayim. That means the Mishkan was in a state of revealment. Shiloh was in a state of revealment. Giv'on, Nov, they were not a state of revealments. The Beit Hamikdash is the true state of revealment. Why? I don't have to ask for it. I know it's being revealed over there. But what's the problem? When you get used to it, then you don't appreciate it. We're gonna learn it. We're gonna learn. He's gonna mention how Achaz messed up, then Menashe for sure messed up. 
you know, Menashe, Menashe Melech Yehuda, the, the son of Chizkiyahu Melech Yehuda, which we mentioned today in our parasha, in our, in our shiur, he was the uh, first king, uh, he, he ruled the most, 52 years, which is funny, he, 52, 52. And he, he was such a rasha, and his time, Hashem already put a stamp on the korban. In Menashe's time. That means from Menashe's time and on, it never changed. Your Miao was already having the Nevua. Then Yoshiao, then Amon was the king. Amon, his son, Amon. Amon made a big Avera. I shouldn't maybe mention this in the, in the video, but I'll say he did an Arayos with his mother. With his own mother. Who is this? Menashe's son, the king of Yehuda. And then Amon's son was Yoshiao. Yoshiao was such a tzaddik from the time of David Amelech till him there wasn't a great king like him in fact the Navi compares him to David Amelech Yoshiao Yoshia. and uh, when uh, Yermiao wrote Megillah Seicha the whole Megillah half of it at least is a, is a kinha on him and his death Ruach HaPeinu Mashiach Hashem Nilkad Bishchitotam is talking about Yoshiao but the the Xera was already was already stamped. They couldn't. They could have tried to change it, but Menashe messed up. And the funny thing is, Menashe half of his kingship he was doing shuba. I mean, sometimes you mess up so much, and I mean, and their level that how much he, he tried to do shuba. First of all, he bought the, he brought the altar for Avodah Zara in the base of Mikdash itself. Second of all, he brought an idol in the Heicha. Second of all, he was with. Third of all, he was with his sister. Third, fourth of all, he killed one thousand men uh, as a korban every day. Jews? Yeah, they said the the streets of Jerusalem were filled with blood. Yeah, uh, Avodah Zarah was a davar lachut back then. He did to Avodah Zarah. Avodah yeah, Avodah He messed, but he did tshuva. That they, the Ramchal says that he's the rosh. He's the rosh Shiva of Chazor B'Tshuva in uh, in uh, Olam Abba. And the, the crazy thing is, in Masachat Sanhedrin, it says he has no chedek olam ha, but that means he doesn't get up in Tchias Amaz. But in Gan Eden, the Rosh Hashiva of Chosrim B'Tshuva, the Ramchal says this, is Menashe Melech Yehuda. He ruled the longest, 52 years. Then, but sometimes you get to that point where, like, the Gemara says, but there's a machlok in the Gemara. The, the Tanakhama says he has no chedek olam ha, or if Yehuda says he does have chedek olam ha. Uh, it's not uh, clear cut. But uh, it says by uh, by uh, the, by Menashe when he did tshuva, the king of Mitzrayim took him to hostage, and then how did he want to kill him? He put him in an oven, and he lit the oven, and the oven was on fire. He started to, to dive into all the king. That means he didn't try to look for a way. At first he davened. That means back then at least they had some kind of emuna. Then they started to daven, daven the god of this, the god of this, the god of that. And he's like, well, listen, I tried davening to everybody. Let, let me dive into the God of my father. And he davened to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it says, the Malachim said to Hashem, don't accept it. And Hashem said, no. He opened up Kabutabi, a new window in Shamaim, and he took the tefillah of Menashe. And he saved Menashe's life. And he did tshuva. That was his tshuva. That was the beginning of his tshuva. And then he ruled Yehuda, but he couldn't He couldn't fix whatever he messed up already. I mean, he was the shorish of the Avodah Zarah was so deep in Klal Yisrael you couldn't fix it. Then Yoshi, then Amon came, and he was already out of the the loop. And his name means Amen, which is the crazy thing. It means Emuna. And then his son Yoshia was supposed to be the Mashiach. He brought back some of the ten tribes. The uh, Aserus is about him. Masechet Megillah, I think Daf Yud Zayin. That's why uh, within us today is the ten tribes. People say that ah they're lost in Sambation. It's not true. Masechet Megillah. Some of them came back. I mean, some of us today are from the descendants of the ten tribes, and then Yoshiau died. Then the Balagan happened. Yo Yakim became king, and then Nebuchadnezzar came. Then his he died, and then uh, Yehoiachin. That uh, was all Balagan afterwards. Then it was already end. Then Zerubbabel, which is Nehemiah himself, he was supposed to be the Mashiach. Lo there was too much assimilation. The Gemara says. The Amisha was too assimilated. And the whole thing went. The, we lost five things Arona Kodesh, Kruvim, uh, Urimetumim, Shechina, and Nebuah. 
And that's how we know Mashiach is going to come back when we get those five things back. So until we don't have those five things, Hamatzav Bish. So you could have Eretz Yisrael. We it, any, we're still in Galas. We don't have any of those things, no? With nothing, of course not. So until we don't have those five, Mashiach is not yeah, coming. Right. Those five things are the Chesed, the, the Keter, Chochma, Bina, Chesed, Givura of Za. So the thing they say with the Paraduma, Yavo, Ve'atzipor, Ba'ra, They could say whatever they want. Ve'lo Kashub. Ve'lo Kashub, Think about it for a second. You have a para aduma. Who in the world is going to burn the para aduma? You have to be taller to burn the para aduma. Who's gonna, if we're all Tommy Mess, who's going to burn it? Huh? Yeah. Said. 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 If the base of Mitish comes ready from the third, from the Shamaim, we have something to talk about. That's only if you hold according to Rashi, according to the Rambam. That's not the way it works. We're going to build it ourselves. That means the Tuma is going to be beheter. For that, you need a Sanhedrin. That's what Maran of Sifkara wanted to do. He wanted to make a Sanhedrin to bring it all back. Lo istayad milta, because the Rabbeim in the Yerushalayim were against him. Does it work for all time? Does it work for all time? If the Sanhedrin say that it's a, that it's a, that it's a Hora Asha, then yes. Yeah. In Chanukah, and also by Eliyahu and Avin Har Karmel. He made a Mizbeach while there was a Beis HaMikdash. It's an Isur Doraisa. How did he do it? Hora Asha. If a Navi says, the Hora Asha, that means it's a moment that it needs to happen. Te'i chasu shalom davar acher. You have to listen to him. If he's a real Navi, you do it. There's no difference between making a Mizbeach in Har Karmel and eating the uh, Hora Acher. There's no difference. It's testing. You test him. Huh? is to prophesy something that's out of this world and it has to happen in the near future he has to give you a date and he can't say like the yoshka guys ah he's coming back when he comes back he's coming back still and the f train is coming back he's coming back what do you mean he's coming back what, what, and what is coming back what he's delayed it's always a delay exactly <laughs> The Navi has to. The Navi has to say like Shmuel Navi. This last week's uh, after he said, "You guys asked for a king. I'm, you guys did something wrong. Proof. It's you make tzir chitim. There's no thunder in Yerush in, in Eretz Yisrael right now. It's, it, there's no there's no cloud in the sky right now. Hashem is gonna make like right now. It's gonna shake the world. It happened. It's in the Navi. It means if it wasn't true, what would Am Yisrael say? Take Sefer Shmuel and. But it's been here for the last. Right, and they had of the Abu Dazar, they would have said it's not true, but they couldn't say no because the people believed in it. Correct, guys. Right, so we're getting from Mashir and Shari or to Sefer Anavi. Uh, we have to right. get back over here. Let's finish the so paragraph. Saying that David the Melech was supposed to build the... Yes, because he was Malchut and he was supposed to be the base of Midish, which is the Malchut, and Yerushalayim, which is Sprat of Malchut, and Har Abayt, which is the Malchut. Ah. Hashem, even though Hashem says to the Navi, to Nathan, Hanavi, there were two Navi in the time of, of uh, yeah, two major, major Navi, there's many Navi, two major, Nathan and God, Nathan and God. So Nathan tells uh, David, Hashem says, you think I need your base on Mikdash? I've been walking in a Mishkan ever since I came out of Mitzrayim. You're going to build me Beit Arazim. Beit Arazim means a cedar, like means like something... Uh, kavua. Something Kavua. Something Kavua. Something Kavua. But then, so, so, so David the was confused because in another place, the Navi tells him, you're not going to build a house. Shlomo is going to build a house. But then the other Navi says, you want to build as Hashem is saying, yeah, it's been, it's about time. It's been 400 years since you guys came out of Mitzrayim. You guys can't build me a house. So what would David do? Ma'asa David HaMelech. See, this Sefer also answers a lot of kashas in the Navi. Ve'echin kesef. So he prepared the, the, the building. Ve'zahav, ve'chesef, u'nechoshet, u'barzel. Etzim, avne shoham, miloim, v'avne poch, u'rikma, v'kol even yikarav, avne shoham, l'ro. To guys who guys I'm not gonna translate everything he basically prepared everything the see there call marechet ha mikdash you call batav and again zahab and you have a hadar he made the whole blueprint anybody who builds a house knows the architectural work takes a lot of time 
He made the whole architecture work. Ha'azarot, ha'ulam, ha'echalot, shayar. That means Shlomo Amelech came to already plan. All he had to do was put it into fruition. Exactly. That means David didn't just make the whole plan sound. Everything he got Baruch HaKodesh, and the funny thing is, I know it's going to mention it over here, he got Baruch HaKodesh running away from Shaul, wow. learning in the yeshiva of Shmuel. He knew he's not going to get it, and yeah, he still did the Shem Shemayim. Because he knew that was his Bechina. Wow. This was his Bechina. It was his Bechina. It was his Bechina. That didn't like bother him, but he did it. Can I tell you something crazy? What? Something out of this world? When you build a shul, you're doing the same thing. It would be to do it. Amen. I'm letting you know right now of Eliyahu Mani. Uh, Eliyahu Mani in his Sefer Kisei Eliyahu. He writes over there rare mitzvah that you could do today. One of them says you could build a base on Megdash. He says, how? Oh. So in him there's a shul that's being made. If you if you put your body into it, it's even more today who does the thing, but if you put your donation in it, you try to build as much as you can. You're building a Beit HaMikdash. Rabbi Eliyahu Mani in Kisei Eliyahu. Look, I think in the fifth parish. Physical. If physical is better. But, but uh, if you give a donation, it's it's like as if you're Mikhaim, the mitzvah in our days of building a Beit HaMikdash. It's Masechet Mikilah, Vasuli Mikdash. Mikdash Me'at. Mikdash Me'at today. So it's not such a, you, you help in the shul, you clean the shul. You just, you're, all, you're like a Kohen inside the Beit HaKanis. It's all connected. Yes or no? It's all connected, right? You got. It's not that the, he was. The, you have to be the Zegni star. Uh, so uh, then we'll make a use for him, and we'll give a hilulot for you guys. But everything. Oh everything. David knew exactly. It was one point. How David did it on the run. It reminds me of the Rambam. You know his Pirusha uh, Mishnah. He did it on the run while he was running away. From well, the Alma Hadens. From the Alma Hadens. Yeah, but he was in one spot. He was hiding from his life, no? You love her, Bishima. Yeah, I'll give it to you. It says in the Passock, David, David Amela gave to Shlomo his son, the Tamit Aula, the Ed Bata, the Ginzaka, the Eliota, the Katara, the Pnim, the Bedeka Poet. But Tamit Kola Shaya Beruach Imon, the Hatsu Beta Shem, Polish Kota Savita, the Sutta Elokim, the Sutta Kodashim. David prepared everything for him. You know he's going into detail because he loves the Beis Hamikdash. Rabbi Yosef Jikatili lived the Beis Hamikdash. He couldn't wait to see the Beis Hamikdash. We can't wait to see our businesses and our houses. He couldn't wait to see the Beis Hamikdash. Rabbi Yosef Jikatili lived the Beis Hamikdash. He couldn't wait to see 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 the Beis Hamikdash. He couldn't wait he knew this all these measurements, all this yeah, stuff. Well, from Shmuel, no, from Shmuel, they learned mm-hmm. together from Shmuel and Navi oh, while they were in 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 uh, Berama in Benayot when he was running away from Shaul. One night he stopped by Shmuel and they learned. And that night with Talmid Vatik, uh, the Gemara says couldn't learn by his Rebbe. I don't remember the time frame. All but, they uh, want, they want in time. one night, in one night, all this. he learned. I mean, do you know what kind of love they have for Hashem? The love you're gonna have for your wife. Is nothing what they love they have for Hashem. Is nothing they had to love for Hashem. Halavai should be zokhar something from that. Amen. Something from that. And you know what? The something that we're gonna have is gonna equal to their a lot. For sure. The Ari says that. The Ari says that. Shlomo, yeah, he knew Shlomo. But Navi told him Shlomo, you've never. He weighed how much how much uh, uh, gold he needed for the menorah. Menorot, there was twelve menorot. Menorot to him, zav mishkal. Menorah, menorah. Menorot to him, menorot to him, mishkal. Menorah, menorot to him, menorah, menorah. Veta zav mishkal. The shulchanot, the ma'arek, the shulchanot, the shulchanot, the kesed, the shulchanot, the kesed. The mizlakot, the mizrakot, the kesed. Zav taor. Basically, the tables, the 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 forks, the spoons. How much silver? How much gold he needed? The mizlakot, the forks, the mizrakot. The spoons, hakisavot, zav taor, everything pure gold. La kapore, you know what the sad thing is? All this went to the Egyptians. When Rechav Amos king, Shlomo's son, the king of uh, Mitzrayim, the Egyptians, Again. came up to the Rechav Am and he gave it all as a bribe to let him to let go of him. What the Egyptians came to Israel to, to, to 
Listen, if you didn't learn Navi, you gotta learn Navi, man. Yeah. Main. Yeah, listen, you gotta learn Navi. Torah. Oh, you learning Navi? Yeah. It's about time. Yeah. I just, I never understood how from 24 books they took uh, 19 books and they just throw, uh, just throw it away. I don't, I don't understand that. Five books they learn. What happened to their 19? That's only mean to me. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how are you not gonna learn it? <laughs> they just took it and they said it's for women. Tehillim, you could read. Well, what's the pshat? I don't understand. Until 150 years ago, every yeshiva learned Nevi'im v'ktuvim. They knew every every pasuk, every every sefer, every everything. Why does it? Why? Because there was a guy called Moses Mendelssohn, Shem Rishayim Yirkav, and he made a whole uh, thing. You got to translate the book, and then the Germans took it, and then the Kritmachs took it, they translated it. The Yeshiva Shah world said, listen, don't come next to Nevi'im v'ktuvim. Just know that they're possible. Possible? Yeah. The people who translate, try to tell this, that. Yes, then, but knowing this knowledge makes you stronger. Da, uh, la hashiv la pikoros. A lot of people learn today's art school because of this. Because of because they they did the avoid of the nevi mektuvim. Or Hashem, somebody did it. I thought he said just now. Oh, because oh, because they don't. That's why they don't learn art school. You're saying. You said that that. Took the they took and they translated. They said, "Leave the." Uh, oh, they switched it around. Yeah, they switched it around. Because he made it in English. That should when understand. Art Scroll came out with their English translation, you know what kind of fight was? Of course, because it was the Allah. end of the world in the Fish beginning. Allah, 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 Allah. But they already did it. What do you mean? Uh, so and they, oh, now they see that the generation needs it. Look how much now the Art Scroll is the bread and butter of all the Chachamim. It's the bread and butter, literally. Anybody who gets into art scroll, uh, he's uh, considered a chacham. You understand? I was talking with a rabbi from Flatbush, a uh, handler. He wrote a book on the Rashash. Baruch Hu Mivorach. It's in the Matabea I think he's Litvish. I don't know. I thought it's, I don't know. I don't know. I think he's Litvish. Uh, he has a yeshiva in Flatbush. A small yeshiva. 10, 15 guys. They learn Kalu Chatzot. From midnight until thing, and then like a couple of guys do sidur rashash in the morning. So I, I was talking to him. I had some svarim to give him from my rebbe, some svarim to give to him because they learned my rebbe svarim shnei chaye and uh, sidur rashash. So I asked him like, oh, I never heard of you. This I actually I did hear of them, but I didn't take it seriously. And then uh, he's like, yeah, we have a thing. He's like, oh, do you know I had I came up with a book from Art Scroll. Art scroll, you you learn Rashash. What's what's you an art scroll? He said, yeah, I hid all the secrets in the in the words. I think it's called a meaningful bracha, something like that. A book that yeah. came out. Oh, 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 it's him. It's a, something bracha, like a meaningful bracha. How to make a meaningful bracha? Because he loves this Baruch Hu as his safe. He loves the Matbi'ah bracha of the Rashash, and he's like, listen. I guarantee you, you learn the safer, you never make a bracha again. You're gonna never make a non meaningful bracha again. If not, call me up, I give you your money back. That's what you told me. I just had a conversation last week. I, I, told, huh? I didn't I didn't get the safer, but I would love to read it when I have the chance. First of all, you know, change four diapers and this and that. When I have the chance, I'll, I'll get to it. You understand? But uh, soon by you. If the Torah Chacham was crying, because he missed that, we could also miss it. Uh, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay? But uh, people think, you know, we want to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Today. Just because you had that face, I have to say something crazy. There is a very famous couple on Instagram. I'm not going to say who they are, even though they're on Instagram. It's not and Horror because everybody knows about it already. Uh, a certain rabbi, he's in Israel, and his wife... So they do a lot of videos and stuff like that, this, that, and he's called the dancing rabbi. People, uh, uh, you know, they, they invite him to, to weddings because he dances, but when he goes down the uh, the chuppah, yeah, this, that, and his wife makes a whole thing. They have six kids together, this, that. Today they came out, we're getting divorced. So, I, so my wife tells me this in the morning, she's so sad. And I tell her, I said, isn't this the lesson of life? Not everything you see on social media is true. 
you don't know what's cooking under the uh, under the uh, you know i don't want to say the word you know people they go out to the um, july 4 let's go to the beach let's go to the this and they're all posting 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 and I tell my wife so always while they're posting they're all happy the next second they're at each other's throats again and for the picture you have to look nice you know what i'm saying and the woman think like oh wow he, he's they're posting it looks such a nice couple like it's all amazing over there you know what i'm saying i think that's true it's all fake you understand happy birthday and the thing is built in the next second take your cake out of here i don't want to see your face but for the picture we we gotta do it i'm with the shikra you understand look at them that what do they have like two million followers i don't know how many followers they had Everyone said this is an amazing cow. It was all for the Instagram. Fake. Fake. You know why? They're missing the real Malchut. Fake it till you make it. They're, they're missing the, the real Malchut. Malchut Kadisha. You understand? What's the real meaning? Uh, to uh, your home with your wife and your kids. You have to go out. You have. What? What's the problem? I don't understand. Because they did it. It's fake. It's fake. You understand? David HaMelech understood that. If he would have built, let's say Natan and Navi told him not to build a basement, I'm gonna build it anyways. What would have happened to that? The next second it would have been destroyed. Hashem would have made Nebuchadnezzar that minute to destroy. David HaMelech said, I trust the Rebbe. I trust, uh, he, had, he, he, had to, he had to have amazing trust. To have Even though he, he knew he was greater than He him. prepared everything. You don't see what he's saying? Look how Yosef is saying. Mizrakot, Mizrakot, Mishkal Kesef, Mishkal Zahav, Shulchanot, Menorot. He prepared everything. Why should he let his son take the glory? I trust him. He had an emuna for his rev. And this is the same Natan Navi who told him because what you do with Batsheva, you're going to pay for it big time. And he did with Avshalom. It's the same one. It's the rev that gave him the greatest tokecha. He accepted his thing. He's going to say, you. You're gonna get a month, you're not gonna go to base Amazing thing. Uh, let's, let's get a call bechtav, miyad Hashem alai skill, call melachot, David Amelach says in Divrei uh, Ayam, he says, Hashem alai his skill, call melachot at Havnit, Hashem gave me the chokma. Hare lecha, says Rabbi Yosef, ki David alav shalom, si der kol tsurot bet hamidash, David was the one who prepared the base hamidash. Umishkan, he prepared. He prepared the weights. Gabriel Chai. He prepared the weights of the Beit Hamigrash. How much gold you need for this? How much silver? Al pi Hashem ilbrach. Al pi Hashem. Va'akol tavnit ha-merkava. Here's the, here's the punchline. Everything was according to the Merkava of Ha'eliona. I heard even he prepared the work of Sun, huh? David made the exact replica of what's in Shemayim. The exact replica. One day we'll make a kavana. How to do the kavanot merkava? You could do it to yourself every day kavanot merkava. Kisei o ma'on l'shchina. The shchina will rest over there. How much you have to cry when you see the mask over there? The mask that that place that was a merkava l'shchina kedusha, which according to the Rambam and we hold today, if you go there, it's karet. Oh, it became uh, <laughs> became the house for the uh, for the satan. How much we have to cry? If we don't cry, at least we should understand what they used to cry for. At least we should understand what the, we shouldn't look at the chachamim as fanatics, as we as weirdos. They lived this. They lived this. May Hashem Yidbrak Yizakeh Otanu Liyot Mador Kisel Shechina Kedosha Hashem Yizakeh Lebracha Vatslacha Parnasa Refua Yishod Gedolot Vekol Abrachot Vekheni Yazom Enoai Amen Ve'yitain Lecha Eloi Mitala